This video is for Chinese citizens. If you are not a Chinese citizen, I suggest clicking up here and I'll tell you the five best countries for offshore banking right now. If you are a Chinese citizen, either living in China or outside of China, this video is gonna tell you how Chinese citizens are opening foreign and offshore bank accounts in some of the best banking jurisdictions available remotely without ever visiting those countries and even from the comfort of their homes in China. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Chris and I'm the head of banking relationships at Global Banks. We help investors, entrepreneurs, and businesses solve cross-border banking problems. And this includes helping Chinese nationals understand their options, opening offshore and foreign accounts. Now, I need to make a few points clear. I'm not talking about banking in small, low quality countries. I'm talking about banking in legitimate banking hubs. And I'm not talking about opening retail accounts with a few hundred dollars. In most cases, the accounts we're gonna discuss require at least $150,000 in order for you to open them. So if you can afford that sort of deposit, this video is for you. Though one quick disclaimer, I'm not telling you to do anything illegal. Yes, I am gonna tell you how to open a foreign and offshore bank account as a Chinese citizen, even if you live in China. But for the purpose of this video, I am assuming that you already have funds outside of China in another country. After all, the State Administration of Foreign Exchange and the People's Bank of China have very strict rules on what you can and cannot do when it comes to moving money out of the country. And because China participates in the OECD's automatic exchange of information and the exchange of information on request, you should expect that any financial accounts you hold in foreign countries will eventually be reported back to the Chinese government. So make sure you are reporting and disclosing your information correctly. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, you may be wondering, have we ever helped Chinese citizens open foreign bank accounts? And the answer is yes, in a number of different countries at various deposit levels, including places like Singapore, Switzerland, and even the United States. And this has included helping Chinese citizens living in China and outside of China. But the requirements and disclosures that are needed to open each bank account will vary, depending on the person opening the account, the country where the bank is located, the source of the wealth, source of income or employment history, and whether they plan on showing up in person or opening the accounts remotely. Not surprisingly, we found that a large number of Chinese nationals looking to bank offshore or get assistance with opening international accounts are self-made entrepreneurs or investors. So in a lot of cases, they have existing international ties or clear rationale for banking in different countries, such as wanting to make specific investments, buy real estate, or even help their kids pay for university. But more on that in a minute. Now, before we dive into where you can open accounts and the extra hoops that you'll have to jump through as a Chinese citizen, let's quickly talk about the risk factors and what makes a Chinese citizen higher risk from a banking perspective. And there are three risk factors that we're going to discuss. The first are any ties to the Chinese government. And while this may sound obvious, I'm not just talking about your standard peps, politically exposed persons. Instead, I'm also talking about people who have worked at state-owned enterprises or major companies with ties to the government. And while that obviously includes anyone at the executive level, which would typically fall under your standard PEP screening anyway, it can also include senior management, even middle management, basically any position where a bank might look at that role and say, that seems like a position of authority. And the reason this is a concern for banks when onboarding Chinese citizens, while it's rarely a consideration for people with other citizenships, is because the Chinese government either has direct involvement, direct oversight, or even direct ownership over a large part of the Chinese economy. And as a result, individuals who work for large Chinese companies could in theory be considered government employees or at the very least have access to state funding. So there's elevated risk for bribery and corruption, which banks obviously want to avoid. The point is international banks take a closer look at Chinese citizens who work in large companies, whether those companies are directly or indirectly tied to government activities. We've seen this before and it can require supporting documentation to show that a person no longer holds a position of authority or they don't work with that company anymore in order to put banks concerns to rest. Okay. Risk number two is the location and source of your funds. Now, like I said at the start of this video, I'm assuming that you already have your money outside of China. Otherwise, you'd be pretty hard pressed to get your funds out in the first place. But even if your money is outside of China, foreign banks are still going to want to know where it came from and how it arrived in those accounts to begin with. Now, depending on where you plan to open, you could find banks that won't care about the funds after a reasonable seasoning period, say three to six months. Although generally speaking, with higher risk clients, they will wanna look back on your financial situation longer than that. Obviously, this can depend on what other risk factors you present when opening accounts. And that brings us to risk number three, which is, can you prove ownership of your funds? For most people, this isn't going to be an issue. And what I'm really talking about here is how your initial deposit is going to be made into your account. What's the source? 
Is it another bank account held in your name? Or is it a family member's bank account? Or a random third party's bank account? Your answer to this question, it matters. Because if you are planning on using unofficial channels, like sending money through family members who are already overseas, or even using black market money changers, then you'll probably run into issues proving ownership of your funds. Passing money through these third parties is going to result in a broken chain of custody and makes it difficult for banks to onboard you. This is especially true if you want these third parties to transfer the funds directly into your account as your initial deposit. So it's worth considering how you plan on making your initial deposit into your account when opening. Now, beyond risk factors, you still need to determine where you can open an account. And there are a few steps that Chinese citizens need to follow in order to figure out the countries that are available to them. And step one is figure out where you have ties. Now, I have talked about ties in past videos, but this essentially means where you have a meaningful economic or personal connection. This can include formal ties, including places where you own a business, own real estate, or have residency. Or this can also include less formal arrangements, like places where you and your family vacation, or places where you have family ties, like a country where one of your children attends university, or a country where you have family members living, like a brother, sister, or parent. Again, these ties, both formal and informal, can help build your case when opening in a specific country. But it's important to point out that in certain countries, Chinese citizens can open without ties if they can meet deposit requirements and know which banks to approach. In these instances, the reason for opening an account is usually about economic stability, security, and access to a wider range of investments or foreign currencies. Of course, there are fewer of these options to choose from and they generally require higher deposits. Which brings us to step number two, decide how much you wanna deposit and keep in the account. Now, like I said, most of the Chinese clients that we've helped open offshore and foreign accounts, they tend to deposit at or above the premier and private banking level, which means 150,000 to a few million dollars. And obviously you start to see a wider range of banks that are willing to consider you beyond the 150,000 level. Plus you can tap into private banks in different countries once you cross a million. The point is Chinese citizens have options and these options include both premier and private banks. Now, if you're not ready to open at the premier banking level, but you still want to open remotely, there are banks available, but there's a lot less of them and they're harder to access. So whatever your situation, it's important to be clear about how much you want to deposit and keep in the account before you apply or before you contact us for help because your deposit can have a huge impact on the banks that are available to you. Okay, step number three. This one is a bit more obvious and it's decide if you want to open in person or remotely. And the reason this step is important is because it's going to dramatically cut down on the banking options available to you. That said, we're primarily talking about remote account opening in this video, meaning you can be sitting at your home in China or you can visit a branch while traveling abroad, whichever you prefer. But in most cases, if we're talking about deposits in excess of $150,000, you will be able to access most of these options, both premier and private banking options, without showing up in person. And lastly, step number four is decide where you want to open. Now, the three steps that we've already gone through should help you narrow down your options, but I wanna help you jumpstart the process by giving you examples of countries where Chinese citizens can bank as foreign non-residents, including where they can open accounts remotely without showing up. So the first country we're gonna discuss is Singapore. Singapore is one of the best banking hubs available today, and Chinese citizens can open with top Singapore banks, as well as very reputable international banks that have regional offices in Singapore. This might include Swiss banks, for example. But generally speaking, Chinese citizens will need to deposit at least 150,000 US dollars to open a bank account in Singapore. But if you want to access the higher levels of Singapore banking, then you'll need to come in with a higher deposit, around 3 million USD. The point is, Singapore is an excellent banking jurisdiction, where Chinese citizens can open bank accounts with limited red tape and a lot less paperwork, at least when compared to the next two countries that we're gonna discuss. And the next country is Switzerland. Now, Switzerland probably isn't too surprising of an option here. Swiss banks are extremely capable when it comes to onboarding higher risk clients, including higher risk or more compliance intensive citizenship and residency combinations. Plus, if you're a Chinese citizen with crypto source wealth, Swiss banks are extremely capable at navigating the compliance challenges of crypto clients. So this could be a natural fit. That said, if you want to open a bank account in Switzerland as a Chinese citizen, you should be prepared to deposit at least 500,000 to 1 million Swiss francs just to get started. Though in certain instances, you might be able to open here with less in the 300,000 range. Though at these lower levels, you would need to have an otherwise low risk profile and you would not be able to have crypto source wealth. Okay, the next and final country is the United States. Now this might be surprising, but it is possible for Chinese citizens to open in the US in certain instances, if they have existing ties that they can prove to US banks. That said, there are very few options available. 
Keeping in mind that there are over 4,500 commercial banks in the US, only a very small percentage of these banks will consider applications from Chinese residents, at least without having a very concrete connection to the United States. Many banks will even require Chinese nationals to provide a US address and show up in person. But again, in this video, we're talking about how you can open remotely. And there are certain US banks that will allow Chinese citizens to open bank accounts remotely without a US address or a US phone number. Now, we have heard from Chinese clients in the past that have had some hesitation about banking in the US because they're concerned over what might happen in the future if tensions between China and the US start to rise. And while we certainly understand that concern and appreciate the forward-thinking nature of those questions, we prefer to look at recent examples of similar situations to try and understand what might happen going forward. And one such example is Russia. Now, obviously, sanctioned individuals, sanctioned companies, state-owned enterprises, and government accounts were all frozen. But individual Russian citizens have not faced the same challenges. In fact, even after the invasion, Russian citizens still successfully opened U.S. accounts. In other words, U.S. banks and regulators are practical, and they recognize that average individuals do not reflect the actions of their home country, and therefore, they still allow them to bank in the U.S. That said, you're typically not gonna be opening at the retail level if you do want to bank in the US, especially remotely, so you should be planning to come in around the $100,000 to $250,000 deposit level as a minimum. So those are three countries that you can consider opening in as a Chinese citizen living in China or outside of China. Obviously, there are more countries available to you, but hopefully this will get you thinking in the right direction and help you get started with opening accounts. And if you do want to open an account, you can start by navigating the process on your own and use the steps that I've shared in this video. Or you can visit globalbanks.com to learn more about our account opening services. On the other hand, if you just want to keep learning about offshore banking, here are six of the easiest places to open an offshore bank account. And here's the truth about information sharing and bank privacy that no one else is going to tell you. So if you haven't already, make sure you give this video a like and hit that subscribe button so you get alerted the next time that we post a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.